Prime Minister Narendra Modi has unveiled Mission Sudarshan Chakra, a bold decade-long initiative to build a multi-layered indigenous aerial defense shield capable of protecting India's strategic, civilian and religious infrastructure from evolving threats. At its core, Sudarshan Chakra is not a single weapon or platform. It's a national defense grid, integrating existing missile systems, surveillance networks and command and control frameworks into a seamless automated shield. The goal is clear. By 2035, India must be able to detect, intercept and retaliate against any aerial threat, be it drones, cruise missiles, ballistic projectiles or swarm attacks across multiple altitudes and domains. Rather than reinventing the wheel, the mission will likely build upon India's current arsenal. The Russian origin S-400 Triumph, already deployed and colloquially referred to as Sudarshan Chakra by some Indian defense circles, will serve as the long-range backbone. But the real transformation lies in the indigenous layers, the Akash Prime for low-altitude drone and aircraft interception, MRSAM for medium-range cruise missile defense, and the upcoming Project Kusha, which promises long-range high-altitude interception capabilities, rivaling global standards. These systems will be fused through platforms like Akash Ter and IACCS, enabling real-time data sharing, automated threat prioritization, and coordinated engagement. The result is a C4ISR-driven shield, command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, capable of responding within seconds to multi-vector attacks. But Sudarshan Chakra isn't just about interception. Modi's emphasis on precision counter-strike suggests a retaliatory layer. Loitering munitions, Brahmo's NG variants and AI-assisted targeting systems that can trace the origin of an attack and neutralize it with surgical accuracy. This dual capability, defend and strike, marks a shift toward active deterrence, where India signals not just resilience but retribution. To understand its operational relevance, consider three real-world scenarios. In the event of a drone swarm attack on Delhi's power grid, Akash Prime and Samar systems would intercept low-flying threats while Akash Ter coordinates battery responses across the NCR. AI modules would identify launch patterns, enabling loitering drones to strike the source within minutes. If a ballistic missile targets Jamnagar refinery, the S-400 would detect and intercept it at high altitude, while Project Kusha's M3 variant, once operational, provides redundancy. Simultaneously, retaliatory assets like Brahmo's NG would be launched toward the identified launch site, neutralizing the threat at its root. During a cross-border rocket barrage from POK, MRSAM and Akash batteries would form a dome over Jammu, intercepting incoming projectiles. Ground-based radars and UAVs would trace the launch pads, triggering precision strikes to prevent further escalation. Strategically, Sudarshan Chakra offers India a layered advantage. It enhances deterrence by raising the cost of aggression, boosts civilian morale by visibly protecting public spaces, and reinforces defense autonomy by reducing reliance on foreign systems, especially critical amid recent tensions with the US over tech transfers. Moreover, once proven, the system could be modularized and exported to friendly nations, positioning India as a global player in defense innovation. In essence, Mission Sudarshan Chakra is not just a shield, it's a statement, a declaration that India will no longer rely on piecemeal defense or foreign goodwill. It will build its own dome, its own doctrine and its own deterrence, layered, indigenous and unforgiving.